welcome back students in our previous video we have talked about ripple carry adder in the ripple carry adder we saw that the disadvantage we had was that it was having a very high delay and as the number of bits will go on increasing the problem will become more and more serious and just to have a recap of how that problem existed in the uh, ripple carry adder let us take four bits as an example let us suppose we are adding two numbers a and b where a is 1011 and b is suppose all ones now we are supposed to add it now 1 plus 1 will be 0 with carry 1 so we can see carry is generated at the stage number 2 so triple 1 is 3 means 1 with carry 1 again 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1 and and 111 is 3 means 1 and 1 so what we have observed in this particular case is that after every stage we are having carry getting generated and carry out is also generated and we said last time to implement one bit we need one full adder so if one if uh, one full adder is having a delay of 10 nanosecond so it means to finalize this particular output i need uh, because there are four stages 10 into 4 that is 40 nanoseconds of delay will be there and this is only for four bits we are talking let us suppose we are talking about uh, maybe 64 bits then you can see how serious the problem will become uh, because uh, we have to ripple our carry from first stage onwards depending upon what is the value of ab it can go worst as 64 into 10 which is 640 nanosecond now this problem we want to resolve and in order to resolve this problem the solution is carry look ahead adder there are two possibilities actually one uh, solution to this problem in order to reduce this delay or in other words we can say how to increase the speed the one solution is you will use faster gates but it is not always practical to use faster gates because of the physical limitations <clears throat> then the other solution is to increase the complexity of gates to increase the complexity of the circuit and uh, due to that what will happen your speed will uh, increase and uh, this is the approach we are actually using in the carry look ahead adder now let us see the process how uh, CLA works so we define some new variables over here let us call first one as P which is equal to A XOR B and G which is represented as A dot B now P we call as it is called as propagate P is propagate and G is generate and because we are talking about multiple bits so we can generalize it by using a subscript I in all the variables where I can be uh, 0 1 2 3 and so on now again recall as far as the adder circuit is concerned uh, we are having equation of uh, sum as a xor b xor c but since a xor b we have set is equal to propagate p so we can write sum equal to p i xor c i and carry equation last time we have seen it is equal to a b plus a xor b dot c so again using this p i g i concept it will be equal to g i plus p i c i now what is the information that this uh, p and g is telling us is that it talks about the carry if you will see here these both the terms that we have defined here are being used in the carry so a dot b is a condition uh, which tells us that carry will be generated when both the values are 1 means when a is 1 b is also 1 so that is a guaranteed case that carry will be generated so this is the first case and second term a x or b is telling you that provided that c is 1 provided that the third input input carry value is 1 what we need in that case either a or b should be equal to 1 and the same thing we can also learn from our truth table also i will show you in the next slide so you can see here if suppose the value of a and b are 1 as you can see here 
uh, it, it is the full header to table and we are focusing on carry only so we know that carry is one at the position of three and then five six seven so if you will look at these two things a and b value is one so a is one b is one so what is the carry in in these cases one so it means whenever a and b will be one irrespective of value of c will be always have carry as one so that is one case now what about the second condition second condition is uh, what if the value of c is already one c means input carry so you can see here c is one c is one so if c is one then what we need out of a and b we need one of them at least to be equal to one so we are having this case and this case so this can be represented as a bar b and this can be represented as a b bar so if c is one then we need either a bar b or we need a b bar so this is nothing but a x or b dot c c is this one so this thing we called as generate and this thing we called as propagate now uh, based on these two equations uh, if we will look at this full adder diagram that we have covered in the ripple carry adder so we can see uh, if we talk about carry the first stage was c0 now c0 will produce carry c1 c1 after adding with a1 b1 will give us c2 c3 and c4 so this carry equation we can generalize as c of i plus 1 is equal to g i plus p i c i means next value of carry will be dependent on the previous values of uh, g i plus p i c i similarly uh, the sum equation can also be uh, written as s of i is equal to p i xor c i because some uh, values are also uh, written as subscript 0 1 2 and 3 so so those subscripts can be you know uh, generalized as this i now in this slide we have just summarized the values of si and uh, c of i plus 1 that is sum and carry now we will use this carry equation to get the values of all the carries which was uh, like c0 c1 c2 c3 and so on now first of all we can write c0 is equal to input carry because this is at the beginning of the circuit as we can see here this is the input carry which is the c0 so we can write c0 is equal to input carry now c1 will be equal to g0 plus p0 and c0 what about c2 it will be g1 plus p1 c1 but c1 already we know from our previous step what is the value so we can write c2 equal to g1 plus p1 g0 plus p0 c0 so we can again solve it it will be g1 plus p1 g0 plus p1 p0 and c0 what will be c3 c3 will be equal to if you use a general equation it will be g2 plus p2 c2 which will be equal to g2 plus p2 and c1 equation already we have received here which is g1 plus p1 g0 plus p1 p0 c0 so again we can uh, solve it it will be g2 plus p2 g1 plus p1 g0 plus p2 p1 p0 and c0 now what have we done with all this is that if we will look at all the carries like c1 it has been represented in terms of c0 c2 also has been represented in terms of c0 and c3 also has been represented in terms of c0 only so it means we are not dependent on the intermediate values and c0 is something that is available right at the beginning because if we will uh, you know take example of 4 bit full header uh, let us uh, suppose we are having 2 bits only represented here so c0 is available at the very beginning along with the a0 and b0 so all the carries all the intermediate carries c1 c2 c3 they are dependent on the c0 value only so we can uh, at very first hand calculate the values of all the sums and so on 
now uh, from this equation of c1 c2 and c3 we will generate one logic circuit diagram which will correspond to the carry look ahead generator so let us see that diagram so this is the uh, logic diagram of carry look ahead generator and how we have implemented this uh, logic is as per the equations we have received for c0 c1 c2 and c3 and just to confirm uh, i have just copied uh, two equations from here for uh, c1 and c2 so that we can verify the logic stands uh, true so you can see this c1 uh, what is this c1 equal to uh, so you can see there are inputs coming from here and here so this input is p0 and this input is uh, c0 coming from here so this is p0 c0 and then this is g0 coming from this side and now we are having or gate so we just have to take sum of these two so you can see c1 is equal to what g0 plus p0 c0 it means this logic similarly what is c2 equal to it will be equal to g1 plus p1 g0 plus p1 p0 c0 so you can see this implemented over here and i will leave it for you just to check whether c3 is uh, corresponding to our equation that we have derived in the earlier slide or not so this is the carry look ahead uh, generator diagram which will produce us uh, carries c1 c2 and c3 based on the values of p and g now finally we are having four bit carry look ahead adder diagram where the carry look ahead generator block uh, that is shown over here represents the diagram that we have shown in the previous slide it means now see how things are being getting implemented over here uh, at the input stage if you will concentrate on the input stage we are having first of all all the bits uh, in terms of input bits so if we will look at uh, the example suppose we were about to add two numbers like this like we started with our example so these bits are like a0 a1 a2 a3 and similarly these two these four bits are b0 b1 b2 and b3 so it means these bits along with the carry input which c c0 which will be equal to suppose 0 so these bits are readily available to us once we are doing addition so you can see at the input side all these bit values are being given here right then what is available at the output side the carry look ahead uh, generator that we are having in the middle it its aim is its function is to provide us the carries which is c0 uh, c1 c2 c3 so those carry bits are being then given along with the p why because at the final output we need sum and carry so this is suppose s0 s1 s2 s3 so this is my uh, output and along with the carry that will be generated here it may or may not be generated it depends like in this example the carry will be definitely generated at c4 so this is the equation uh, that we have discussed in our earlier slides so it is nothing but pi xor ci ci is something that is generated like c1 c2 c3 and so on uh, so and that is being xor with pi so that is why you can see in this diagram we are taking connections of pi so you can see p0 p1 p2 and p3 connections given and it is being given uh, so that we can generate si accordingly so that's why i have written like if it is s0 we need p0 xor c0 if it, if it is s1 we need p1 xor c1 for s2 we need p2 xor c2 so if we will look at the right hand side of the diagram that is what we will see s1 suppose we need to calculate it will be p1 xor c1 so c1 is already available c1 c2 c3 is already available and then c4 uh, then p1 where is p1 coming from p1 is coming from this particular diagram uh, this is here so what we have to realize in the diagram is that these output bits s0 s1 s2 s3 and c4 are being generated at the output based on the uh, pi values and the ci values ci values we got from the carry look ahead generated block and we needed just an xor operation of pi pi can be p0 p1 p2 and p3 so those values we have already generated like this value is p0 this value is p1 this value is p2 and this value is p3 that's why you are able to see connection from here here p2 and p3 that is being given so that we can generate the s values so the summary of carry look at adder is that we are increasing the complexity of our circuit 
and uh, the advantage we are having is that we are able to produce the outputs which is S0, S1, S2, S3 and C4 uh, without depending on the intermediate value of carries because what we have done in our equation over here all the carries all the intermediate carries was uh, they were dependent on only and only c0 values and once we are doing addition c0 value is already available and similarly a0 b0 uh, in, uh, a1 b1 a2 b2 and a3 b3 so these values are already available and all the equations that we are having here they are dependent on only these primary values so obviously once you are giving the primary values of a and B along with the carry, all the carries are generated uh, generated simultaneously. Uh, all the carries are generated simultaneously. So after that, it is easier to generate sum and it is easier to generate carry because as far as P and G is concerned, they are simply dependent on A and B only, and A and B is already available. So this is the complete summary of uh, carry look ahead header. It makes our header faster at the cost of increasing the complexity of the circuit. That's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next class. Till then, God bless you all and have a nice time.